More live events are actually happening this Ooh. morning. It's Good Friday, of course. We're awaiting a Ted Cruz town hall in Wisconsin. Wisconsin votes the first Tuesday in April. But the big story today is the feud with Donald Trump uh, over, with Ted Cruz and Donald Trump over their spouses. With us is uh, Micah Mosbacher, Women for Cruz co-chair. Ashley Webster's here. Liz McDonald is here. Micah, to you first. You are the chair of Women for Cruz. But what do you make of this, this really ugly fight about wives between Donald Trump and Ted mm. Cruz? I mean, is, this is a new low, isn't it? Don't you think that? Yes, I felt like I was watching a Hollywood reality series instead of a presidential campaign. And let me say, both Melania Trump and Heidi Cruz are extremely talented, accomplished women. More importantly, their wives and mothers. And let's save these tweet sideshows for the Kardashians and get down to what's important in America. Women are concerned about national security, especially in light of these horrific terrorist attacks. And Ted Cruz has been very strong in uh, not only attacking Obama, but attacking Hillary Clinton, who is the GOP's common enemy. But my she God, was the architect of this disastrous uh, but, foreign policy. Are, are you comfortable with seeing, your, your guy is Ted Cruz, are you comfortable with seeing him look into the camera and call Donald Trump a sniveling coward? Comfortable? Mm. I would like to call for civility in this race, uh, especially in our own party. We cannot eat our own. I am opposed to the super PACs who are moving this anti-Trump uh, momentum. I think it is distracting from the main issues. We're in a horse race. We're going into Wisconsin where Ted Cruz is building a huge grassroots army. He's not, uh, he's, it's not all said and done. Donald Trump is not the presumptive nominee. But at the end of the day, after we get rid of this NFL sort of series, and get the scrimmage done with, we've got to kiss and make up, in this case shake hands, and we've got to elect a Republican into the White House. I don't see how you're going to do that after all, this, uh, all these statements about wives in the recent past. I don't see how you get over that. And frankly, I think the winner here is Hillary Clinton. Right. Uh, last 20 seconds to you, Micah. I think uh, the winner is Hillary Clinton. I certainly hope it's not. I think that we're in this terrible state of affairs due to the Clinton uh, White House uh, and also the Obama White House. Right, so Micah. it's miles to go before we rest, but I'm going to be optimistic about this race. All right, I'll be back to you in a second. I want to deal with another issue, which is Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg calling out Dr. Ben Carson on The View for his endorsement of Donald Trump, comparing him actually to Hitler. Uh, is this Trump shaming, Liz? Is that how we can well, put it? Well, I mean, that's going a little far, comparing him to Hitler. I mean, good Lord. Uh, Hitler yes, is he accused. I mean, he committed so many gross atrocities. Um, but, you know, Ben Carson really didn't put up a good fight here. Right. Essentially, Whoopi Goldberg said, you know, Trump has bashed women. He's expressed racist views. Why are you still, you know, supporting him? And Ben Carson said, uh, well, there is no perfect person. Um, that just didn't really cut it. it ben Carson, Ash, he did yeah. not take the opportunity to forcefully respond to Whoopi Goldberg's He's statement. He's never right. forcefully responded or made his point, period. He's very likable and people, true conservatives like him, but unfortunately in this television age and the age of reality television and everything, his message is just lost because he's so relaxed and so mm -hmm. calm in his demeanor and unfortunately the message gets lost to, to, to compare him to Hitler though is an outrage I'm sorry that is yeah. just over the top and she should be called out on it right but uh, Ben Carson is going to be on this program today on our show he's going to respond to Whoopi Goldberg's comments again about 30 minutes from now roughly 11:45. Ben Carson on this program today mm. to the Brussels attacks Raids going on as we speak. The latest on the arrests and everything else? It is ongoing. We understand the latest raid in the Skarbik uh, region of Brussels is now over. There are several explosions heard, even reports of some gunfire. We have another person taken into custody. Uh, we understand that they are saying, they as the federal prosecutors in Brussels, that they believe they have a, an accomplice to the bomber at the metro station. He was actually seen on CCTV carrying a large bag bag, leaving it in the metro station, and then not getting on the train. They believe they have him in custody, who they don't have, and they've still yet to track down, is the man in the white, or in the hat and the light-colored clothing in that picture of the three people at the airport. If you remember, the one on the right, 
Uh, firstly, I misidentified him. The two on the left have been identified as the bombers at the airport. Where is that person on the right? They still can't track him down. Can you imagine being in Europe at this moment? No. When, you, when there's an expectation yes. of another yes. big attack right. relatively yeah. Very soon. Tense. Brussels and Paris, not exactly locked down, but pretty close. Yep. Police all over the place, machine guns all over the place. This is Europe today on it, Good Friday. Charles Kranhammer said there could be a guerrilla uh, plan in place for a continent wide. So With he, 400 he said fighters that, there, they yeah. could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary. It's, yeah. Now, I'm staying on terror. The European Union's Law Enforcement Agency. It says that the threat of ISIS in Europe is more urgent than first feared. All right, what's the latest on that? So the latest on that is, is essentially what's happening is they are finding the, and we've already seen this already, the iceberg effect. In other words, they see the tip of the iceberg, but the iceberg's bigger underwater. So they're finding possibly bigger networks under, under, it's being submerged. And so you mentioned 400. I've seen as high as 500. I've seen as high as 600. The problem is they don't really know how many fighters went into Syria and Iraq and then mm -hmm. came back. The numbers vary widely. So and well, so and there's very little, as Ashley has been reporting, intelligence sharing between security forces well, and probes by prosecutors. But they don't know how many of these migrants are also terrorists, deliberately infiltrated no, with the migrants. No well, okay, you can figure out how many of your fighters went from France to uh, to fight for ISIS yeah. and then came back again. Okay, that's fine. But you don't know how many of these migrants right. are actually so no, carrying falsified documents, right. Syrian passports that are being made by we some know, forger. Yeah, the NATO general. Philip Breedlove has said that, that, you know, there's weaponized migrants. That's what he's calling them. Mm. Do you remember the British journalist Piers Morgan? Mm. Um, he mm. wasn't real popular in America when he called some Americans stupid because of their stand on guns. Well, Piers Morgan is now criticizing President Obama's handling of the Brussels attacks. He said, what the hell is wrong with Barack Obama? Why does he not seem to have a clue how to behave when major atrocities happen around the world? Micah, come back in again. What are your thoughts on this one? Well, once again, he has turned his back on America. He was in Cuba. He was not here. Uh, no one's minding the store, and I think that that is why American women in particular do not feel safe. Uh, and Ted Cruz has been very strong in his criticism toward Obama. And, and also in controlling the Syrian refugees coming into the United States until we come up with a better vetting process. Yeah, I was just very surprised to see Piers Morgan say something like that about Barack Obama. Wow. All right, uh, Mika, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, now, our next guest spoke with a prominent author who was born and raised in a strict Muslim family. But he says he converted to Christianity after study, after really studying Islam. Just watch this for a minute. And as I began to open up the pages of the Quran and the Hadith to investigate the life of Muhammad myself, I found many things that were very surprising. Ultimately, I concluded that Islam was violent at its core. Very interesting. Uh, Lauren Green is with us, Fox uh, mm. chief for religious correspondent. You did that interview, I believe, with that gentleman. What else did he tell you? Well, it's very interesting. Nabil Qureshi, I, I've got to give the background on him because he has a unique understanding of the world of Islam. He comes from a devout um, Muslim family. His father was a, is a retired U.S. Navy lieutenant commander. His uncle served in the military. They still practice Islam. He has a stake in people understanding Islam from its core, but he converted to Christianity because he believes that at its core it is not a a peaceful religion and he told me this listen to this the vast majority of Muslims are peaceful but that doesn't make Islam a religion of peace Islam has always been defined by the teachings of the Quran and Muhammad and if you open up its pages there are some peaceful teachings to be sure but as the Quran progressed chronologically from its inception to its conclusion it got more and more violent that's powerful stuff this is very because... Stuff, and what's more powerful about that is that the ISIS people are using those verses in the Quran to attack, to attract, and radicalize young Muslims. And he said, this is very interesting, he says, there is a consistent thread running through each and every example of such radicalization. The radicalized Muslims were explicitly introduced to violent traditions of early Islam. They became convinced of their authenticity, and they intentionally chose to follow them. Hmm. So here you've got a religion that is supposed to be a religion of peace because he believed it was, but then he hmm. looked at the Quran and compared it to things like Christianity and he said, 
I can't reconcile the verses, the violent verses, with what I understand my religion to be. Has he converted to Christianity? He has converted to Christianity. He actually studies, he's getting a doctorate in theology from Oxford University in Cambridge, in, in Oxford, England. Mm. He is a medical doctor, like our friend Dr. Zudi Jasser, but he came to a different conclusion. Now, there are many Muslims who this will offend. And I know yes. that because I'm going to be interview a young man in a, in a few minutes um, named Samuel Bhatti, Salam Bhatti, who is a member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, who is very peaceful, and they are, they're trying to create a campaign to show people why these violent verses are in there. The problem with um, the Quran is that it's not a narrative like the Bible. Right. So you've got peaceful verses along with violent verses, and you've got to put it in context of historical context. The bill says, because those violent verses come towards the end of Muhammad's campaign, he believes ISIS is, pra is practicing a much more um, real uh, Islam than the peaceful Muslims. And this is where the conflict within Islam is, is, uh, is really very hard for us on this, Westerners to kind of understand. Yes, on this Good Friday, that is a fascinating mm. story. Yes, it's, it's very, it uh, and you can find that interview on foxnews.com. We will. We shall search for it yes, and watch. <laughs> Lauren, thank you so much. Sure, absolutely. Appreciate it. I want to get back to that uh, very emotional story. The child, who has a small amount of Native American blood in her, ripped away from her foster family because of the Indian Child Welfare Act. Up next, the lawyer who is representing the family. <laughs> Hey, you cannot film her. You, she, you cannot film her. She's a foster child. You cannot film her. She's a foster child. Let me know right now. I'm violating the law. I'm violating the law.